All right, there we go. Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is another episode of PXJS, a show about building things with JavaScript. And today we're doing another proposal. Um, this time around, the top voted one uh, was the um, the one you see on the screen right now, adding feature to Exaframe. I am uh, not sure why you would want to see that, but uh, can't really complain. You know, I've been um, having a, like lacking a bit of time to work on Exaframe lately, so that's a great opportunity for me to jump in and actually do some uh, meaningful work. So I've been lacking some features for it recently for some deployments that um, I've been having myself, and yeah, it's always good to work on um, projects that is useful to you. You know, so uh, the task here is basically implement a new feature and additionally talk about ideas um, with Exaframe in general, right? So let's start about uh, talking about the ideas first. So if you, if you don't know, Exaframe is my project. It's a self-hosted tool that basically allows you one command deployments and manages Docker for you. So you can easily deploy projects without thinking about any configurations essentially. So it's uh, sort of attempt in doing a zero config deployments, easy and self-hosted. Uh, it's written in JavaScript, Node.js, uh, client and server as well. Uses Docker, uses Yarn, uses Docker Compose, uh, supports third-party templates and a bunch of other cool features and based on essentially Docker and traffic for stuff like Let's Encrypt and gzip compression and um, some other things basically. So the general idea of the project is to make it easy to deploy things, right? So and I, if you haven't seen billions of my um, example videos where I show off Exaframe, uh, the way it works is very simple. So I'm gonna go into tests, fixtures. So I have like a bunch of projects here. So for example, there's a node project here. And uh, if we open a VS code over here, come on. Let me make it bigger, I guess. Uh, so we have a very simple node project, right? It's, it's a simple express app with a package and yarn. All you have to do is specify the start script and then listen on the port 80. And then uh, what I can do is I can just say exaframe deploy or exo, uh, which is my alias to exaframe because I don't have exo installed, which is a Linux utility for something. I don't know if I remember what was it, but um, yeah. Right, um, it will take care of building the image using the correct template for you and following all the best practices that there are for deployments. And then in a few seconds, we should see that this app is actually deployed. Um, there is a minor thing that it actually, this we won't be able to access this app right now, I think, unless my local config is, includes the sub automatic subdomains, uh, which it actually, yes, it does. Okay, so we should be able, uh, this is the build log. Yeah, we should be able to actually see this as a, there you go. So there's our Hello World app. That's really all it takes to deploy things with Exaframe. And uh, I'm really proud of it, to be honest. <laughs> so it's like 340 stars here. Um, where I want to go with it. So I'm, I'm going to, yeah, I don't think I'm going to close this later. So basically where I'm going to, where I want to go with it is I want to extend it from just deploying uh, some projects like Node.js, Static, Java, whatever. So like right now you can use a uh, templates, right? For that, there's a bunch of uh, project types that you can deploy, including Node, including Static HTML, including Java, Maven. Um, what else? What was the Java server name? I was forgetting that. So basically we just did a bunch of templates that we use internally and it works okay, right? But the thing is that um, quite frequently I, don't really want to deploy the whole like server thing, right? I want to deploy one command. So this is this is what you would call serverless or uh, function as a service, right? So more or less the in the same area. So this is my next uh, thing, right? So I want to add support. So this is this is basically all the tickets that you see here are all enhancements and additions and you want to see the roadmap sort of, uh, you can have a look at them. Most of them are discussed here. Most of them are actually pretty small features like, you know, private Docker repo support, which is quite trivial to do actually. And it's a very nice um, starter issue for the Exaframe if you're not familiar with it. There's like, you know, simple endpoint switching using logging command. That's actually already been implemented if I remember correctly. Someone sent a PR for that. Yes, indeed, the PR is now merged. So I just have to release it at some point. And, uh, yeah, most of those are relatively simple. There are some a bit more complex one like Docker Swarm support because right now it just uses the uh, normal Docker services which won't work in Swarm mode. 
this is a bit more um how do you put it a bit more time intensive i guess but still it's um relatively easy to do so i hope the video quality is okay let me just really quickly check what is going on here twitch yeah that seems to be fine okay good seems to be okay all right so yeah, uh, but in the long term, there are two major things that I want to do with Exaframe. Number one is add the complex recipe support. So the idea is that there are some things that you want to scaffold or install or set up that take uh, a lot of time to do that, right? So the good example would be Apache Spark, which is a Apache big data processing framework. It is non-trivial to set up, especially in the swarm uh, mode where you have like multiple nodes and machines and, and you know, like have to set up the load balancing and all that kind of stuff. So it'd be really neat if we, if we would have a recipe where you could just say exaframe set up Spark and you would get the Spark deployed on your machines. This is sort of the end goal. And as one of those recipes, you would have um, exaframe set up function as a service, right? And then you would basically have some sort of a proxy for dynamic invocation that would work as a similar to function as a service services like the Google function service or, you know, um, AWS Lambda or whatever. That's the global idea, the global plan that I have. Hell if I know if I when and if I will have enough time to actually implement that. It's not too complex, I think, but I would need a lot more time to actually think this through completely. So, you know, I, it took me like a few months to implement the custom templates, although it was a relatively simple task. So I like record, uh, outlined the task in November and finished it in January. So, you know, I don't really have too much time, unfortunately. But this is the global plan allowing scaffolding the whole applications with it and allowing uh, even stuff like, you know, functions as a service deployments using Exoframe or through Exoframe, right? Obviously, we're not gonna do this today because this would require a lot more than one hour or two hours of a stream time. So I thought we could actually tackle one of the simpler issues and the one that is actually most pressing to me right now uh, ignoring folders during deployment. So there is a bunch of projects that I am involved into right now that require me deploying some apps that have a lot of test files that are used for, you know, making sure that the data integration works correctly. And there's like a lot of data and uh, I don't know, about 100, 200 megabytes of files. And um, well, uploading them every time to a server when I want to redeploy a new version is a bit of a pain in ass. Unfortunately, there is no way in Exaframe to ignore stuff right now. I mean, there is a hard-coded uh, way to do that. So let me just close this, uh, make this uh, here. So there is, as I said, a hard-coded way to ignore files and... Um, and if I remember, where was it? Oh, yeah, that's the ignores, right? So we have this ignores folder. And I believe it is just hard coded right here, right? Okay, so here we go. So what I actually would want to see is I want to see the some sort of a dot exaframe ignore maybe or something that would allow me to define the folders that I don't want to package and that I don't want to upload the to the server, right? So I think that's a good issue to tackle. It's relatively simple. We can easily do it within one hour. And um, well, you will see me working on this, this thing. So probably a good idea to add uh, commands uh, like exoframe ignore folder, or I guess blob would be better, right? Similar to git ignore um, whatever the folder that you enter, which just appends the data to git ignore essentially. The same way we're gonna do the same. So we are not gonna be needing server for this at least not yet right uh why is there a changes now i guess i did update something okay that's basic oh by the way yeah that's a good idea we can upgrade the dependencies oh uh, let's see okay this is a patch this is minor minor patch minor 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 okay so there's aura version 2.0 so we're gonna upgrade the minor ones first and run tests to make sure that everything actually works properly because um even though they theoretically should be minor and patch upgrades I do know there are some people in node community that love publishing breaking changes under the minor change, like minor version changes. So that's, you know, always good to run tests and uh, make sure that everything passes and it does indeed. Okay, so we're good. Right, okay, now let's yarn upgrades. 
let's upgrade aura and if it breaks we'll know that there's actually aura breaking stuff but i think the api should be uh probably compatible and just adding new stuff right am i correct with my assumption okay exo i think yeah i think we're good so test passes nothing breaks um what are the actually aura what are the changes? So there should be a change log somewhere here. Um, no, really? Okay, that's interesting. Uh, usage, API, start, succeed, text, then fail, warn, info, persist. Okay, so where's the, where's the changes to version 2.0? Come on. There you go, breaking. You can no longer specify stop. And, okay, I never did that. Now correctly clears wrapped lines. Okay, that's that's a fix. And uh, okay, so there's only one breaking change and it does not affect me. So that's good. Um, let me remove that exoframe JSON that were generated during my deployments. Okay, git commits, update dependencies, right? And now we can start working on ignores. So we need two things. Number one, read the ignores from file and if they are not there fall back to the default ones which i guess would be this so let's call it default ignores right and um so where are they used default ignores there we go okay uh okay so here we go we need to first read ignore um i guess try to read ignore file right so const ignores is going to be a fs read uh, file sync. So we have the config path, which is, yeah. So I guess we're going to say, um, ta -da 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 -da. it's going to be ignore pass, right? And we're going to call it exoframe ignore, right? Um, I should not forget. So wait, you know what? Let me do it this way create a new thing here and we're going to say so we need ignore um okay read ignore config from deploy um then we need ignore okay exoframe the so frame come on exoframe ignore command and we need um update docs to reflect new ignore stuff so so it's just so that i don't forget what i have to do because if i don't do this i will eventually forget that i'm you know like to write docs or something or forget to do some minor things that are that might be annoying basically okay so we um i guess we can just do i want to just try catch no that would be boring let's do this so yeah um i guess yeah we can just try catch right because we don't really care about um I'm gonna say let ignores it's gonna be default ignores and then i'm gonna try so ignores is gonna be fast read file sync right ignore path we just read it and this is gonna be um to string right so this is what we want to do to string it's going to be a string with line breaks and then we just do so i think the ignore thing takes an array of paths right because this is what we have here so which means we need to split it by n right and if any of those fails um we're gonna say in verbis modes let's say console log session no ignore file um let's let's no. exoframe ignore file found using default ignores right okay um and uh actually need to use that here use that and we use that i think do, 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 do. yeah that that basically is all we have to do in this case i think so let us make some project or i guess not make i guess we just go to fixtures and uh, try to try to ignore something right so let's go to maybe node project and then um touch exoframe ignore let's go fixtures node project exoframe ignore uh, we're gonna ignore say yarn lock right we don't have yarn anymore, uh, which 
means that um, like the frame minus BBB. So let's go in a verbose mode. Um, where's my ignore? Ignoring following paths, yarn lock. Okay, and we also have to filter for the empty path here. So split N and filter line so that line and line length uh, more than zero, right? So we don't want those empty files. Okay, we got the deployment. So let's try that again. We're ignoring yarn lock. And uh, theoretically, because we don't have yarn lock, it should run NPM uh, template, right? We have a quick look here. NPM start, NPM and yes, okay, it's copying package JSON. You so that seems to be actually working. That's theoretically that's the whole feature, right? It's really simple. So all we did was created this um, tiny code that read exaframe ignore. But the thing is that it's it's almost never that easy to add features to a complete product because it it doesn't really end there. You still have to add more, right? So first of all. We need to add tests. So I am gonna remove this exaframe JSON, remove exaframe ignore, uh, go to parent. So first of all, we need to, I guess, copy some project. So let's test one of them. Okay, wait a second, let's have a look. Project has more files, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's gonna be node project. So I'm gonna copy test node project to test ignore project. Let's call it this way, right? So we now have this ignore project and uh, I am now going to create a file that is going to be called exaframe ignore, right? And we're going to say that we are going to ignore yarn lock and uh, I'm going to create a new file. It's going to be ignore me. I should be ignored, right? So this file should not be there. And we're going to say the one ignore me. This is the other thing. Okay. So next thing we want is to actually write a test that would try that and you know make sure that it actually um, ignores the stuff, right? So we got the uh, should not deploy, should not deploy. Where's our should display error? Should display verbose output? Um, I guess wait a second. I think I had yeah. There you go. So first of all, create. Oh, this is a test. Where's my deployments? Uh, Deploy, uh, this is not, should deploy, this is not what I want, should deploy without path. I guess, wait a second. Um, config, I probably should rewrite that to a sync await actually, why am I using then here? Uh, but that's, that's gonna be later, should execute update. So, okay, you know what, let's just take the simplest deploy here with, yeah, basic deploy, right? So we can take that. And uh, put it somewhere, verbose error, okay, before the errors, right? So we're going to say that. Um, test uh, ignore config. To deploy while ignoring, um, ignoring, no, I guess should ignore specified files, right? So this is what we want. So we're going to deploy the local host we are, uh, this is the knock. So I'm using knock to mock the responses and uh, our test folder. So basically we should make sure that um, da -da 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 -da, expect body to contain. Okay, so we need to test folder. Wait a second, where's this test folder coming from? What is this folder? Okay, we are actually this is HTML project, but we do need to test. Um, yes, copy this. Let's say ignore folder. Ignore folder pass. So this is going to be ignore folder. Ignore test folder, right? Ignore it folder. There we go. Okay. Got that. We got uh, your name. Why do I have to pass to? Oh, that's a relative. Path, right I don't think I need I think I only need this Just ignore project I wait a second it's did I even use node project somewhere I think I did I should probably have a closer look at my test because I'm now getting confused all right so we got this ignore test folder um where's my code there we go okay so our test folder we should have um 
We should have index.js, right? We should have package package.json. And uh, that's actually it. So could be, um, yeah, could be index first package json and then that should be right it should contain those two and then we should expect request body to um okay, you know what here's the question first question is what is what does request body looks like because hell if i remember that um so we're gonna test only we're gonna run this thing only so folder pass there's gonna be test folder ignore test folder Oh, that's why I need a test folder path. Okie dokie, that's the thing. So, nor folder, there we go. Nor folder path, okay. Um, now, now, it may, now it starts to make sense. Ignore folder path, okay. Um, deploy server is done, comes to rocks to match snapshots. So we don't really need, okay. I mean, I guess we can run it with snapshots. So now we can run yarn test deploy. I think I can just run it like it. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. There was, there was some problems here. So duplicate module name test project. Uh, what is that? Oh, right. Okay. Ah, uh, because yes, right. Okay. Correct. That is correct. Test ignore project like this. Don't care about other stuff. Now, da -da 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 -da. new snapshot is not written. Yeah. Okay. Update snapshot is fine. Deploying array. Okay. So we got this array. We got ignore me. That looks like a binary encoding to me. That basically is multi part, right? Got package JSON and uh, how do I check that it's not included? Wait a second. So I guess yeah, I guess we can just read. Uh, first of all, we need to not include self, right? So we need um, wait a second. First of all, we say git and we say no frame nor right because we don't really care about that file. And what we need to do here is we need to say split line filter and then we say concat exaframe ignore. So we push it to the end so that we don't include the ignore file itself because it's useless uh, on the server. I guess it's useless, right? I mean, okay, we can see, we can see about that. So we need what? We need, uh, first of all, delete that. What I want. So we need exo ignore it's going to be read file uh, exo frame ignore uh then we got ignore me thing so ignore me gonna be ignore me so basically we read the whole project right so we got package json and we got yarn yarn lock gonna be yarn lock and I guess we could say expect request body uh, to not to contain. So we should it should not include exo ignore. It should not include ignore me, and it should not include yarn lock. Right? I run that again. Okay, there's one failed test. Um, I. Yes, it is because the snapshot is not written. Okay, good. So theoretically, if we run it now, okay, I remove um no no not no the ignore project. Why does it write a JSON file there? Did it? it doesn't write them to the other folders, does it? Um, a lot truly restore. Yeah, okay, you know what? Let's let's just let's just try. I'm curious. So in theory, it should generate a new snapshot for us. And snapshot test failed. Okay, What's wrong with that. Oh, right. Okay, right. Yeah, the um, uh, deployments verbose output will change. That is correct. And then the uh, snapshot is not written. So, oh yeah, because I'm running it as a CI thing. Okay, right. So, rm yarn. That, wait. Test folder. 
at this yarn error log. Got that generated the exoframe JSON again, so delete that. Hey, wait a second, exoframe JSON. Um, I'll write thing. So this is why does it generate it there, but not in the other ones? I am confused. I'm running in a test mode, right? Okay, so first of all, let us generate the what module's been uh, guessed, right? So run jest and then I think minus u is update the snapshots. So theoretically, uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, one snapshot, uh, two snapshots updated. So let's check it if you open that in Sublime. We are interested, that is super tiny. We are interested in the snapshots, right? So first snapshot, no exoframe ignore found, that is correct. This is our new uh, project deploying your project is deployed. That looks fine. And that is why does it logs tests updated the logs test a bit weird. Seconds. Okay, that should not happen. Arn test. Russian, it should pass, right? And here's the question. Why did it update the snapshot for logs that didn't match? That is so weird. Okay. I will write that off for a bug. Okay, so we now have the test. We now have the deploy thing. So we got the this thing. We got the tests. Uh, now it would be good to update the docs, I guess, plus docs. I guess this tests and docs. I guess this is the better way of writing it, right? So we did this thing. Let's first commit that. So just to make sure that everything looks fine. So we got that bit. We got that. Okay, this is snapshots. This is tests. Um, ah, come on. It reset this. This. Time. That looks okay. Cool. Yarn test. Sure that works. Let's generate that exoframe JSON here for whatever. And one like stupid way would be to just kill it. From do I want to do that? I mean, I guess all of them do have the exoframe JSON, right? So. Um, maybe I should just commit it there. But if I run tests now, it will fail. No, it won't fail, right? Because I don't check for exoframe JSON. So. Yeah, okay, good. That's fine. I guess we should add the check for exoframe JSON as well, because I mean, it's there. So it should be in the, um, should be in the, th what do you call it, con? Exoframe, exo CFG, let's call it this way. Exoframe JSON, yes, uh, to contain exos. Run test. Um, I guess I could run yarn test as well. I always kind of run both of them. Good. It adds git commit add support for dot exoframe ignore. Um, Presses, what is the issue number over here? Issue number 120. Holy crap, I have a, like, that is a lot of issues there, to be honest. Okay, we got that. Um, now, now we need to add the new exoframe ignore command, which is, and write the docs. I'm thinking, do I really need that exoframe ignore command? That would mean that, I mean, um, we already have like a lot of commands here and adding more would probably, I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't think like, may, okay, maybe if people ask, I will do that later. So let's just stop at the documentation for now, right? Um, okay, so docs basics, config file. Let us see. So, um, 
project ignore file let's call it this way and i guess i'll just say blah 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 okay stuff um so we definitely don't need that just file um so let's say ignore of git node modules uh, frame oh, that's test for example right the ignore uh, okay default ignore file looks like this this right because we're by default we ignore git and node modules so um you can specify um in some okay let me in some case in the some cases you might want to ignore particular files during project deployment pg large uh, g tests test uh, fixtures um, node modules ADC, right? You can specify ignored files using exoframe ignore file uh, in the roots of the project. Sometimes by default, ignore by default or uh, when not provided not provided ignore file looks uh no i guess contains the following entries um uh, i guess it would be good to actually mention that we use blob module whatever what is the um that that's not what i want oh come on there's this ignore thing, which is ignore module, node ignore. Um, is it this one? Hell, if I remember which one was it, I think it is this one, right? Ignore manager. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, blah, 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 blah. Come on, where's my thing? Okay. Uh, um, okay. Um, each line is then used by the nor module during deployment process there you go when file when not provided ignore file consists the following entry for preview how does the preview looks project config um yeah i guess um yeah first of all we should probably split that okay that looks fine project ignore file um I guess that's okay. Okay. Um Yeah. Sure. It commits uh, uh documents uh, project nor file. Right. So we did that. Okay, I don't really need that anymore. First of all, we're gonna push it. I'm gonna push it to the um, dev branch and see whether the build passes. And uh, if it passes, then I'm basically gonna merge it and do a release right now, which will be basically, I think, release actually will contain a bunch of, we got exaframe ignore support and we got the login URL support, which is the whole two features. So it's, yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. Um, all right, and we have a logo now. Yeah, that's also great. Okay, um, where's my where's build? Have a look at Travis. I mean, theoretically, it should not fail, right? Unless I screwed something up and forgot that the CI have us might have a slightly different environment, which uh, theoretically should not be the case, but see. Yeah. All right, so we got that here. Yeah, that looks fine. Come on. 
Okay, once this is done, uh, which version do we have? And actually, meanwhile, out master. Now we got 201. Um, get to oh, develop. I think in develop we had 211 dev, right? Yeah, so. Yes, 2.1 would be okay. Master, once again, make sure the test passes. Seems like this is indeed the case. Make sure that everything passes before doing it. Um, right, git merge, no fast forward develop. The merge branch develop prepare uh, version 2.1.0 right we merge that we're gonna say git change log this is gonna generate our change log open the change log md over here it's gonna be 2.1.0 um we need so additions it's gonna be out support for exaframe ignore we are gonna say um add logo and uh i guess we could say update dependencies as well right uh, so we don't that stuff and login add logo is surprisingly enough there has not been any major bug fixes or anything like this because there haven't been any major bugs which is i'm also very proud of Okay, I'm improving login command to accept an endpoint as an optional argument. Yes, login commands now accepts an endpoint as an optional argument. Add logo. Okay, that looks good. Right, so next we need to say that this is point O. Um, basically it, right? So we got the logo here now, we got all that stuff. Uh, that looks fine um just to make sure the docs are there so we got the project ignore now perfect darn test test should be passing him to be passing perfect okay develop branch yeah develop branch passed so i'm gonna do it release 2.1.0 um, i am correct right so just i'm always Kind of afraid that I will release the wrong version and screw up um, the release at some point and we'll have to re-release -re the smaller updated versions which is always pain in the ass let's just make sure that it works um, the, the version is like, indeed correct I guess you could actually just look here because we publish all of them on, on uh, github right okay, this one is 201 okay so 21 seems to be indeed the correct one um, yeah cool Okay, here we go. So we release 2.1. Um, once the Travis finishes builds, we should see the binaries here as well as the other stuff, right? So now we go to develop, merge master into it to update stuff and push it again. I mean, just change log essentially in the version. Uh, that was a mistake. Going to o dev it commits bump version or next please yes let's do that um i think it's also a good idea to interrupt that um sometimes i push without thinking which um not always is a good thing to do I just rethink my frame so what do you you are now building to all we actually need to stop this one because it is not required to just build this one right okay cool so once those have been built we should get uh first of all binaries here second of all we should whoops we should get npm js package extra frame updated so because i have like basically the publishing set up from the uh, travis so all i need to do is release a new version and travis will publish it on npm and on github i have to think about that just have to make sure everything actually works 
on. All right. Okay. One more top with that. How are we looking here? Okay, the test already passed, which is good. That's a good sign. Now we're waiting for the publishing essentially. Test is still running here, but that should not be different from master branch. Tests are running here. Fine. Come on, Travis, do your thing. Uh, now there's the package thing going on with the binaries. And um, I think we're essentially done, right? So that's, um, where's my, search it to master, I guess. Oh, because I, I wrote address is not closed. Just say reason 210. Is the in 210, close. And we should also close the login thing if it, but I think it's closed itself, right? Because it was actually, there you go. Okay, cool actually closed now perfect so travis come on we'll be done by now there we go all green all good so two one published uh no come on npm pm info exoframe you should be up already there i correct oh one oh okay good question why pm changed something again okay the binaries are here okay wait did i did i remove auto publishing hell if i remember that deploy provider release npm it is there on tags yes on develop with tag now okay so why is it not deployed so this theoretically should have resulted in npm release what is going on now blah 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 blah, blah. any errors by application yes Okay, so it did deploy it. So I guess NPM is just have the old version cache or something. There we go. Okay, 210. I think we're good now. Come on, NPM. Flash your cache already. There's a new version. Come on. Okay, that looks good. So we just need to make sure that it's. Why is NPM so slow today? So I think the latest one is now 210, at least from the API side, right? Yes, okay, that's good. Next is 2.2 dev, which is what we want. And uh, okay, the tag is updated, but the version in NPM is still not, at least the, the list. Uh, I guess it's it's successfully published. So. If you guys have any questions on the process, then feel free to ask them in the chat. I'm looking there from time to time. If not, then we are basically gonna wrap this up. That was a pretty quick one. Um, we added the feature to Exaframe and we released a new version. You've seen basically the way I'm doing it. It's nothing really complicated, uh, but now I have a nice the frame ignore thing going whether I can use it in new projects to stop uploading gigabytes of data to the server is uh, really time saving. Okay, um, I probably have an email saying that the build passes. Oh, there we go. Okay, finally. All right, so we got the logo, we got all that stuff going. Um, yeah, that's basically it. So it doesn't seem like chat has any questions. So I am gonna wrap this up here, I guess. Um, close this. Smaller, and I think we are essentially good. So, yeah, basically done it. So, um, let me just quickly have a look. The projects uh, proposal, no, bleh, no, ah, come on, oh, prop, Christ, yes, yes, come on, proposals. There we go, no topics. So there, ah, yeah, so there are two topics right now that are essentially fighting for the top spots. Okay, let me just close this one and uh, gonna put the links on later. Uh, let me just done something. I will put the links. So let's see the topics top again. 
You got the artificial intelligence topic, which is essentially an open discussion and something I want to do with a colleague of mine who's an AI expert, uh, Professor Ngonga. He's really good in that stuff, but I will have to find time to invite him here or you know via Skype probably and have sort of a one hour discussion about AI, machine learning, all that kind of stuff. So that's a bit trickier. The second one, image processing in nodes, that could be very fun. I know that there is the OpenCV bindings for Node.js, so we can go for that. There is new issue for the progressive web apps and service workers, which is also fine uh, and uh, not fine, but fun. Um, typings and configuring ID is kind of more on a simpler side, but you know, basically what I want to say is go to proposals repo, vote for whatever you like there is now 16 issues and uh, there is not enough votes i mean feel free to submit yours as well but do not forget to upload the issue and even if it's your own issue please do upload it as well because i just count every vote um to all of them basically you know so i really want to know what you're interested in so yeah Cool, I guess there's no questions from the chat, so we can wrap it up here for today. Um, that's basically it. We've added a tiny feature to ExaFrame with some docs and tests. Looks to be working just fine. Um, hopefully no bugs added <laughs> along the way. Thank you for watching as usual, I see. Oh yeah, well, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Before I go, um, there's a small experiment I'm gonna do this Friday. So instead of doing the video game stream, I am going to be doing a JavaScript news stream and I'm going to be reading the news for half an hour, 40 minutes, whatever it will take to actually go through this week's cool and interesting JavaScript news. Um, so if you're interested in this kind of stuff, do attend the Friday live stream. Um, there's going to be the video games if you're interested in that kind of stuff are going to be slightly different times, slightly different days. So probably not Friday, basically, maybe Wednesday. Oh, no, not Wednesday, maybe Thursday or Saturday or Sunday. I'm not sure yet. We have uh, quite a number of really cool games that just came out and I want to play them on stream. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. Um, let us stop it here. Thank you for watching. And as usual, I see you next time. Bye.